Hi, I'm Jack Cush, executive editor of RoomNow.com, and I'm here to give you a short video on four absolute contraindications to the use of a TNF inhibitor. We're certainly well aware of the safety issues that surround TNF inhibitor use and, and what the indications are and what the contraindications are. Certainly patients who are hospitalized shouldn't receive these drugs. Those who have high fever shouldn't be receiving these drugs. Um, I don't stop TNF inhibitors for patients who have colds and pharyngitis and the sniffles. Uh, there's no good reason to do that, and that was not done in any of the de developmental trials. Although that's common practice, it makes no sense given the fact that these drugs have incredibly long half-lives. The other common uh, relative contraindications to the use of a TNF inhibitor include heart failure, um, multiple sclerosis and demyelinating disease, and, and, and uh, lupus. Uh, drug-induced lupus, but those are sort of relative and there are workarounds to each of those situations. But what I'm going to talk about uh, primarily in this video is those who should not receive the drugs. Number one, patients who have active hepatitis. And by active hepatitis, I mean serologically active hepatitis with number one, a positive hepatitis B surface antigen test, uh, and with or without uh, elevated hepatic enzymes and viral loads. But a hepatitis B surface antigen test is a contraindication to the use of a TNF inhibitor, as there have been cases of fatal reactivation of hepatitis B when they receive such um, therapy. Um, now, patients who have resolved hepatitis B, meaning their B surface antigen is negative, but their core antibody, hepatitis B core antibody, is positive, that's called resolved hepatitis B. And with TNF inhibitors, the risk of reactivation is very low in those in those situations if the patient is asymptomatic, uh, has normal liver enzymes, and has no viral load. So that particular profile, you can go ahead and use a TNF inhibitor. Um, but again, positive B surface antigen, no, you don't want to do that. Number two, patients who have or who have had an atypical mycobacterial infection or what we now call non-tuberculous mycobacterial infection, these should not uh, receive a TNF inhibitor because you never truly eradicate such infections. This is in uh, stark contrast to patients who have tuberculosis, MTB, whether they've had active TB that was treated with, treated with four drugs um, successfully for six or more months, or who had latent TB and received one approved regimen, such as INH or rifampin, for uh, four months for rifampin, six to nine months for uh, INH. Um, those you can go ahead and retreat uh, or, or continue to treat with a TNF inhibitor at any time. Um, uh, and patients who have latent CB, once you start them on uh, treatment with INH or rifampin, you can go ahead and start the TNF inhibitor and you do not have to wait a month or six months or nine months. That's all wrong. Look at the package insert. It says before, meaning that patients who have latent TB must be started on prophylaxis before receiving a TNF inhibitor. That's in the wording of all of them. And that before is a very specific word that's been um, negotiated between the drug companies, the FDA, and the CDC, and nationwide experts in the area of tuberculosis. But patients who have NTM, non-tuberculous macrobacterial infection, even if they were treated, they have a very high chance of reactivation and if you put them on a TNF inhibitor. The third uh, reason to not use a TNF inhibitor is those who have had invasive fungal infection. Uh, infections like um, candidal esophagitis, or esophagitis, patients who had lung or disseminated uh, forms of histoplasmosis or coccidioidal myco mycosis. Um, again, we're not talking about oral thrush here. We're talking about invasive fungal infections that required uh, prolonged treatment um, usually with multiple drugs. Again, just like the uh, NTM, non-tuberculous mycobacterial infection, you'd never fully eradicate. If you put them on a TNF inhibitor, they're going to come back. So that's the third reason. And the last reason is uh, males and or females who are undergoing um, BCG uh, bladder therapy for um, bladder cancer. So uh, intrafascicular BCG um, is often used. That is a live virus, and when that gets into someone who happens to be receiving TNF inhibitors at the same time, there is a high rate of reactivation of TB, including death from TB, 
in patients whom, whom the TNF inhibitor was either started or continued. So patients with bladder cancer who are on a TNF inhibitor have to have that discontinued. Now, those are four absolutes. There are um, exceptions to the rule, however, both with active hepatitis, B surface antigen positivity, or with NTM infections, or with invasive fungal infections, you could use a TNF inhibitor if the patient absolutely positively had to take the TNF inhibitor because there were no other alternatives and you were going to provide background prophylaxis to lower the risk. So in the case of active hepatitis, they would have to be an anti-hepatitis B drug like etanavir or lamivudine. If they was for an NTM infection, they would have to be on something like uh, azithromycin. And lastly, for a fungal infection, something like chronic daily uh, itraconazole or light therapy. Chronic suppression in those three instances um, could be coupled with uh, TNF inhibitor use, but patients need to be watched closely by you and by an infection, uh, infectious disease specialist that's appropriate for that particular problem. So those are four contraindications. I hope this helps you. Good luck in managing your patients.